Luke chapter 1, verse number 26. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, The babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told from the Lord. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word this morning. I thank you for your revelation and the things you would show us about Mary and how that pertains to us today. The things you would show us about Elizabeth and the things that you would show us about another woman that we'll read about, Anna. I pray in the name of Jesus that you'd minister to our hearts today, especially to our ladies, because it is Mother's Day. And we ask, Father, in Jesus' name, that the word would be fresh and real. In the name of Jesus, touch our hearts. Amen. My message this morning is seasons in a woman's life. You know, there's actually four seasons in a female's life. There's being a girl, there's being a young woman, there's being middle-aged, and then there's being a mature woman. We use mature in wisdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, where you fit in those categories, I am not touching that. But the message today isn't to the girls. We're going to be talking about women. It is Mother's Day. Mary was a young woman. Amen. Elizabeth was middle-aged. Anna, whom we're going to read about, was mature. And uh, women... Get old, just like the rest of us. Hallelujah. And uh, I remember Sister Edwards told me one time, she said, getting old wasn't a sin, but it sure was unhandy. (laughs) And the older you get, the more you recognize the sound and truth of that. Amen. But I want to say this morning that uh, not all women are natural mothers, biological mothers, but all women can be spiritual mothers. Amen. So we want to look at these things that we're going to talk about from not just a natural viewpoint, but from a spiritual viewpoint. Because you could have had natural children, but you could still have spiritual children. You could be a mature woman here today and still have spiritual children. Amen. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how old you are, you can birth forth spiritual children. So be thinking about that as we look at these three ladies this morning. As we talk about them. Hallelujah. And the first one we're going to talk about is Mary. And first thing that we want to notice and pay attention to is her attitude. Now, I'm not going to say what young women are. I'm going to be talking about what young women ought to be. Amen? Because not everybody has a good attitude. How many of you know somebody who doesn't have a good attitude? Hallelujah. Don't look at anybody. Quit looking at Joanna. So half the room turned over looking at Joanna. I don't know what that was about. Oh, yeah. 
We know she has a good attitude. Amen? All right. Well, nobody wanted struck by lightning, so we'll move on. Hallelujah. Let it be to me according to your word. That should be our attitude. Amen? All of us, male and female, should have that attitude that whatever God's word is, that's what it ought to be. And if God speaks a revelation to our own hearts, if he speaks a promise to us, a blessing to us, if it's founded and grounded in Scripture, then we got to have the attitude, so be it, Lord. So be it, Lord, is amen. And amen, that's what amen means, so be it. We've got to believe that God is going to fulfill and do those things that he says he's going to do. You know, he wants to do things in our lives, and we should want God's will in our lives. We should have that attitude. To run from God and to hide from God is not going to bring any kind of blessings to you whatsoever. Amen. The second thing that we see here, it, it, he says that the Holy Spirit was going to come upon her. How many know we all need the Holy Spirit? But why wait until you're middle-aged? Amen. You young women ought to get the Holy Ghost now. You don't have to wait until after you've had your fun years and everything passes. Get the Holy Ghost now. Get filled with the Spirit now. You want to have the strength to be able to serve God? You want to have the way to stay on the right path? You want to do God's will? You want His Word to be according to you? Then get filled with the Holy Ghost. Get full of the Spirit. Allow the flesh no rain in your life anymore. Amen? Let the Spirit of God have control of you. And that goes for all of us. Hallelujah. You know, Mary, Mary was a, a young woman. Why did God choose her? I can't give you a lot of reasons for it, but he did. And the fact is, he's chosen you too. And the lie of the devil would tell you, you've not chosen. You're not special. You're nobody. Nobody loves you. God doesn't love you. It's a lie. It's just something to try to steal from you today. The truth is, God does love you. He does care for you. He died on the cross for every one of us. That's how much he loved you. So it doesn't matter what you think about yourself. It's what God thinks about you. Let it be according to his word. Amen. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. The third thing that we see here is the fellowship what did she do? She went to her relative. The minute that she heard somebody else was having a like same experience, she went to where that person was. She was told by the angel, oh, hey, your near relative, Elizabeth there, she's, uh, she's pregnant. Yeah, she's in her sixth month. Well, that must have been news to Mary. I mean, back then they didn't have the cell phone. You know what I'm saying? Hey, angels could deliver the news to me, but I have a TV set, so he does, they don't do that a whole lot. But... This angel went to her and told her. And what was the first thing she did? She jumped up and went over there. She hung out with somebody who was experiencing something. See, nobody was expecting Elizabeth and Zechariah to, to have a child at all. She was barren in her old age. Nobody expected that. But what happened? She conceived. Wow. There's another miracle. We see that in the Bible several times. Amen? Well... Mary went to her. Who are you supposed to hang out with, young ladies? People who are full of the Holy Ghost. People who are pregnant with the promises of God. You don't need to be hanging out with other people who, who all they think about is a thing of the flesh. And, boy, did you see that young guy? And, hey, oh, hey, look at the car he's driving and all this kind of stuff. Think about who you need to be hanging out with. You need to be with people of like spirit and like mind. You need to be hanging out with people who walk in freedom, who walk in hope, who have the joy of the Lord. Don't hang out with people who's going to bring you down. Hang out with people who's going to lift you up. You don't want to hang out with people who are going to backstab you. You want to have people that's going to be on their knees praying for you. Amen? So you young ladies, think about it. Get the attitude that you want God's will in your life. Get full of the Holy Spirit and hang out with Spirit-filled people. When I first got saved... I went to a church that was divided terribly. Now, when I, you're a young, you know, when you first get saved, you don't, know, you don't know anything about what's going on. But I could tell something wasn't right, and I just got saved. There was this small pocket in this church that were 
Holy Ghost fanatical, crazy people that wanted everything God had, and they were driving to Louisville two or three nights a week to watch satellite seminars, which was kind of rare back in those days. I mean, this was, this was in the <clears throat> mid-'80s, and, uh, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of satellite and computer stuff. And, you know, I mean, some people had it, but it wasn't as prevalent as it is today. But they had these big satellite seminars going on where they were showing Holy Ghost revivals all over the place, and they were showing one that Norval Hayes was doing at Bob Tilton's of all places. And some of you laugh because I said Bob Tilton, but back then Bob Tilton was all right. It was a little while later when he tried to start his own satellite network that things kind of went a little screwy with him. But, uh, but Norval Hayes had a revival there that lasted for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, and the Holy Ghost came, and it was powerful. And I started hanging out with these people, and I began to realize that they were the ones that supported the pastor. Why? Because they was filled with the Holy Ghost. Honestly, they were supportive. And I hung out with the people that encouraged me in the things of God. I didn't hang out with the backbiters, the people who was trying to run the pastor off, the people who had bad attitudes. Amen? Now, you can hang out with almost anybody in here because we don't have any of those kind of people. Hallelujah. I say that by faith, but I believe it. 1 Peter 5.5 5 says this. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. The scriptures tell us that the older women should teach the younger women. Amen? That means the younger women have to be teachable. There has to be a teachable spirit with them. Hallelujah. They've got to have a willingness to learn, a willingness to receive. 1 Timothy 4.12 says, Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Now, he's talking to Timothy who's going there to pastor a church, and he's a little intimidated. There's older people there. Timothy was a young person. But he tells him to be an example to the older ones. If you ladies, you young girls, you want to be an example, be an example to the people that you are going to be a person who lives according to God's word, who's filled with his spirit, amen, and that you're going to receive from the things that they have to say. Second type of person that we're looking at today is the middle-aged women. have very few of those here. Uh, <clears throat> Elizabeth represented this group. She was past the age of childbearing, but she still conceived. Hallelujah. You know, nobody's too old to get saved. Amen. Nobody's too old to be impregnated by the spirit of the living God. You're not too far. You haven't gone too far. You haven't left this room. So you're not too far off. You could get saved today before you leave here if you wanted to. But there's something that we see with this, with Elizabeth. The first thing is fruitfulness. Yes, in the natural we're talking about, she was bearing fruit. She conceived. But how many know that all of us are supposed to bear spiritual fruit? There are people that you can talk to about the things of God. Nobody else can. I know a man, and uh, he's as rough as a cob. Now, he's a preacher, and, uh, but preaching isn't his strength. His strength is standing alongside some guy's tractor and talking to him and ministering to him. Amen? I don't care who you are. I don't care where you work. I don't care where you live. There's people that you could talk to about the things of God, you could bear spiritual fruit. Now, we also know that their spiritual fruit is love, joy, amen, and the fruit of the Spirit. And people who have the attitude as the young woman did will have the fruit of the Spirit developed when they become middle-aged. You want to see someone who's a baby Christian and, and they could be in church for 40 years? Watch their attitude and watch their fruit, Amen. Because if they never got their attitude right in the early years, there's still going to be a pain in the neck when they get older. Any amens out there? Now, some people don't get saved until they're older, and some people don't get a revelation about who they are and how they've been acting until they're older. So we cut slack, we give grace. How come all the husbands said amen? I don't know. Hallelujah. Luke 1 7 says this. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well advanced in years. 
Elizabeth was no spring chicken. You could have been saved all your life, and you have not seen one person saved. Well, why can't you now? There's no reason. It doesn't mean you're going to be an evangelist. It just means that you're sowing seed. You know what I've heard? You've all heard this. You've heard someone go, <clears throat> well, I don't believe you have to go to church to be a Christian. How many have heard that a thousand times? I don't believe you have to go to church to be a Christian. Amen. And a farmer doesn't have to go out into the field either. But he's going to be very unproductive if he doesn't. Amen. That's a good one. Write that down. You use that next time somebody says that to you. Oh, yeah. Another thing that we see about Elizabeth is encouragement. She was an encouragement to Mary. When Mary showed up, she was filled with the Holy Spirit. How many know that women who are filled with the Holy Spirit can be an encouragement to other women who are filled? Amen. That's what part of it. You're supposed to be an encouragement. We're to encourage one another. We're to stir one another up in our gifts. We're supposed to minister to one another. You middle-aged women are supposed to minister to the younger ones. How that looks like is up to who you are and what you feel like God's telling you to do. Lois is going to the jail and preaching to people. I don't know what God's told you to do. Maybe it's just talk to the people sitting in your pew. Maybe it's to befriend someone who seems a little down at work, find out what's going on in their lives. But we're to be encouragements. God's given us the gifts to be edifying. Amen? That's what it says. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are for edification. If you're full of the Holy Spirit, you've got gifts that God wants to use to edify others. Another thing we see is that she received Mary. She received Mary. If you don't make time for people in your lives, you're never going to sow any seed in their lives. If you don't open your doors and you're not hospitable, if you don't offer to give them a ride, if you don't do all this, if you see everything as just a, uh, a chunk of time out of your day, then you're missing opportunities that you could be ministering to someone. You know, the angel said this to Mary. Oh, Elizabeth's conceived and she's in her sixth month. If you look on there, Mary goes and she stays with Elizabeth for three she was there through probably the birth. She may have went there with the whole notion, I'm going to help with this. Hallelujah. How I many you know you ladies, by giving, you will also receive? Amen. If you think, you think giving is a blessing to someone, just think of what you receive back. You know one of the lessons of mentoring is, is that the mentor receives from the people being mentored? Amen? Because you're pouring into them, but every so often God drops something in them that's just like, whoa, that's good. That's a good word. Wow, that's an awesome illustration. I've heard a couple already today. I thought, wow, that was good. That'll preach. I'm trying to figure out how I can get them up here. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Let the younger help the older. Hallelujah. You're still in Luke. Look over in chapter 2. We want to look at Anna. Not Anna back here. Don't look at Anna back there. She, she's, not, she does, she's not in this category. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 2, go to verse number 36. Now there was one, Anna, a prophetess. Woo! A prophetess now. The daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity. And this woman was a widow of about 84 years who did not depart from the temple but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And coming in that instant, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Now, this, this old gal was committed, amen? Now, you got to think about this. She's older than anybody here because she's over 100 years old. I mean, that's my understanding of it. She, she'd been whittled for 84 years. She lived with a husband for seven. That makes her 91 from the time of her virginity. And they got married a little earlier back then, but still she wasn't like 10 years old. So, I mean, if you do your math, she's over 100 years old, Amen. 
And what is she doing? What she had always done, what she did from the time she was a young person to the time she was an old person. She was still in church. She didn't get too old to go to church. She was still praying. And she was still witnessing. Hallelujah. All those things that can be imparted to the young people today, to this younger generation, can stay with them to the very ends of their lives. You know, I can give a dramatic testimony of a powerful salvation of how I was set free from drugs and alcohol and all those other things. But how much more powerful is it if someone has a testimony that they served God all the days of their lives? That they didn't stray. That when they got into high school, they didn't let the things of the world and the concerns of the peer groups drag them away. Or when they went to college, they didn't chuck all that church stuff to have fun, to get out from underneath the thumb. So many people's lives have been ruined because of one bad decision. One, one drinking and driving accident. One, I'll just try it, test with drugs. One time, someone saying, well, if you really loved me, you would. And they end up with a child that wasn't supposed to be there. Look, it doesn't matter what you've done and where you've been. It doesn't matter how you've served God or not served God. Today's a new day. God's mercies are new every morning. You can start out now in your mature years and serve God. You can start out as a middle-aged woman or as a young woman today. You can do it. But the truth is, with the help of the Holy Spirit, anybody can serve God. It says here that Anna's, she was the daughter of Phanuel. Phanuel basically is the Hebrew. That's the Greek for the Hebrew, Penuel, which is face of God. I got an idea that she was raised to be in God's presence. You know, sometimes parents get 10,000 things going on other than bringing their kids to church. They're going to have all kinds of things come up. There's going to be opportunities for them to miss. I say don't miss. It's not about you all the time. Sometimes it's about them. Father, I thank you even now as they're praying that these younger would receive today from the older that the spirit of the living God would do a real work a solid thing that your blessings would flow as they're led of the spirit to pray whatever it might be Father we thank you for every mother who's in this house we thank you for every spiritual mother we thank you Lord Let their lives reflect your glory. Bless them this day, for this day we call Mother's Day, and we pray a blessing over them. We honor them today. We thank you for them. And I pray your blessing would be with all of us as we leave. Go before us and make our way straight. And, Lord, we pray we have favor in the buffet line. In Jesus' name, amen.